most restaurants in the United States of America and the world. This island has the best rice and peas, the best upstairs, the best beaches. All you come to be a mama can't you get a piece of mother rice. Louis Van Der Richard. I see someone stating that it's a disability to not be Jamaican. Nation, do you agree to that? Let me know. Let us officially kick off the report though. The entertainment feed community wa guan where they are on the Sunday good time Sundays. Community members, enough love and blessings on the Sunday. Where they are once again, I was gonna say, where the entertainment. <laughs> Where they are with ENT news, they are topics, the updates. With that said, on to the topics. Who now see on screen right now? That is dancehall artist Nike Boy. That is his entrance last night at Sumfest 2024. <laughs> I see someone saying that, see Nike boy in that outfit, it reminds them that them file paper run out. <laughs> the song that I not hear though, that is not the song he started off his performance with. He kicked off his performance with a little bit of gospel. But because for us it would uh, pop up as a cover art for a gospel song that is already out there, how to avoid that? Well, simply not to share that part of the performance. Still, that wasn't the highlight of the night for Nike boy, it was this. We congratulate you, continue to do what you are doing Nike. And of course, what do you want to say to your fellow Montagonians? Before I say any words, let me say something like this. Let me do it like this. <clears throat> Clear, I'm a true to you know. Mobia go so father! That is it, man. I know it already. I just want to say it was a privilege being here. And I liked how everything came full circle. That my first ever performance was in. The place I came from, Montego Bay. I appreciate all of you for coming out. Love is real. One art. Love you always and forever. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nigel. Thank you, Mayor Vernon, the Mayor of Montego Bay. So last night, well, this morning was the last of Sumfest 2024. There were a number of artists with some fantastic performance, from some reggae and dancehall veterans to reggae and dancehall greats. But still, fans were displeased. As certain artists that they came to see, they weren't there. For example, Valiant, Craft, Jada Kingdom, and others. Talking about on night one, don't know if everybody who was supposed to perform on night two, they performed. And him do it. A legend. First, we don't get to see most of the artists, them Jada Kingdom, and we pay with money. Them need, and the MC, them attack too much. We pay with money, and we don't get with fear share. We don't see Jada Kingdom. We are disappointed because we don't see Valiant and we didn't see Jada. Jada Kingdom, no so apology, nothing. They have to go down today, 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 today. Yeah, yeah. We expected Jada Kingdom and, and Valiant. And, yeah, well, Jada Kingdom and, and they just closed the show without them. Flop. Like, what happened? So, I can't Very anti-climatic. I believe we get swing. My main person who I come to see, I am um, Valiant and Jada Kingdom. Wait all night. Lose my night's sleep. We got an update from the Jamaica Observer stating that the organizers of some fest have released a statement explaining the non-appearance of four scheduled performance on Festival Night One of this year's edition of the annual show on Friday. The organizers in a statement on Saturday said unforeseen issues prevented Jada Kingdom Valiant and Marcy Chin from making their build appearance, while Kraft, the promoter said, had an unavoidable emergency. Still, pertaining to the absence of certain artists, certain entertainers that were booked for the event but were no show, Iris Catarell, he had this to say pertaining to the non-appearance of the entertainers mentioned. First of all, well, we start with Jada though. Why not Jada? Why Jada didn't appear? Um, I don't want to say for sure because I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. I don't know if she had a discrepancy with the time of her performance or what. However, I am keen to hear from her what her issues were. So she was uh, actually in the venue? She was in the venue, yes. Oh, yeah. she, she looked quite relaxed, having a good time. Mm -hmm. And um, I heard she stormed out, upset. But I looked in the audience and I saw so many females waiting patiently for her. 
even uh, just now all our females was leaving saying that they really wanted to see Jada Kingdom, you know, so. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we when you, that, yeah, yeah, if you're an artist and you love music, I uh, don't think you, you walk out on your fans like that. Yeah. You know, because we understand the rain came and set us back. We have no control over the weather. So obviously the show is going to run a little late, you know. But I guess a lot of people don't really take stuff like that into consideration. Okay. But and big up Jada. And the Valiant story, what's that with Valiant? He didn't show. No. Some people are... No, Valiant was here. I know. I know he was he didn't in the perform. He performed? No, he didn't he perform. He didn't perform, right. No. So, I don't so what's think, explanation for that? I, again, I do not want to say because there's a lot of stuff that happened that was seriously beyond our control because um, when you're doing a festival of this magnitude, it has to be controlled. You cannot bring 300 persons or 100 persons and dic try to dictate how the backstage is supposed to run. Mm -hmm. And we had issues with separating entourage. Mm -hmm. And that w moved into one or two different scenarios. And I guess it didn't work over well with his team. So his entourage was bigger than you expected? Yes, and it can be big, but we have to make allocations to keep the backstage as professional and separated and comfortable for other artists because there's not one artist booked on the show. So we can fill the backstage with one artist's entourage. Yeah. You know, we have to respect other people's space yeah. and so forth. So we can, if you bring a hundred person, we can't put a hundred person there. We have to allocate special designated area for, the, for them. So isn't there a number given to, of, in terms of yes. entourage? Yes. Isn't there a number given to artists, how many people they can bring? Always, in? always, but just like any other, most shows in Jamaica, those protocols are broken by artists because they have people that they care about and they want to bring them along to be a part of their success. Okay. And, and the promoter is the one who reels from this kind of activities because we have to think about the police, the fire department, and we have to think about adhering to the rules and respecting people's space. And when it goes wrong, we get the blame. So while trying to enforce some form of discipline, we come out as the bad guy. So it's because you're you're enforcing discipline why he, he, he didn't appear? I don't know if that's the reason, because even after we enforced the discipline, he was coherent. He was here yeah. and chilling and he was cool. But then I heard that he left. Oh. Yeah, so. Overseas though, I'm over there in England, tear down London. We don't know I'm coming from the street, right? We don't know everything I'm going to get a fight, right? Come on, go out and sell out to some people, right? We just want to say, we got vibes out there, because I know you're soon coming, don't go for that. Bang, bang! I know, so there's a walk, so there's a walk, I'm coming on the stage, but they're going to Bounty Killer, Grand Godzilla, he reshared that footage with the caption stating, Movado did this in England earlier. Bands next time though, son, Starboy thing sold out at Movado at Vibes Cartel. More on Movado, although. Politrix Watch did the story with the headline stating Dexter Dab's Shabba Mother Pot is one of the most brilliantly acidic and destructive songs ever made. Yes, although that is what the title states, Politrix Watch also mentioned Movado in his rant. According to Politrix Watch, he's basically saying Movado, Dexter Dab's, as those were the two names he mentioned, but he's saying that those two entertainers basically normalize violent song that everybody are listening to. Violent songs weren't for everybody, unlike how most people accept violent songs right now. That is why certain artists were known as jealous artists, while the ones they were singing about violent songs were known as badman artists. 
not because of what they did in life but because of their music and as stated before he's saying that violent music weren't for everyone but because of the likes of Dexter Dabs with Shabba Madapat, Mavado mix Badman song with sweet music make it sound so good make it sound so sweet every and everybody listen Badman music right now it is so normal people are party to Badman music vibe to Badman music even have sex to Badman music politics watch even called those entertainers puppets Dexter Dabs of a song named Shabba Madapat. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Right, we're going to hear a song about a recipe for cooking. When me listen, it was a recipe for murder. It was a recipe for disaster. It is so catchy. It has so much melody that even the baby can sing along to it. You know who else do that well? Movado. Movado murder song them sound like something you can play in a Sunday school. Them new bad man song and sound so good. And so easy to digest. You could have played them in a church and get away with it. That's why it's easier now to connect with the youths than back then. Badman song was an entire niche, right? Woman never really checked for Badman song like that. That's why back in the day, they used to say, yo, that DJ, that Badman DJ, and the DJ after the girls, them. And I saw it go. Not now. When that DJ guy, why don't make certain more, you know, contest him? He said, yo, them songs they're not eat dog because them songs they're not... Maybe because he don't put as much effort into them songs. So when man make conscious song, you know, them go for the lamest rhythm, the most vocalist engineer, the melody off, nothing about it. But when man make bad man song, them dig deep into them talent bag. Them people that did use them ability for where them for use it for. The plantation turned upside down a long time, you know. I totally agree with what Politrix watch is saying, you know. Much effort not really put out in a righteous music, although people argue that there's reggae and there's gospel. Still, the bashing for Dexter Dabs, I don't feel as if I don't feel as if Dexter Dabs had a motive behind doing the Shabba Mother Pots. If Dexter Dabs had continued his career singing up Baka Gun song, maybe yes. But right now Dexter Dabs known as the female them artists. Some don't really understand the beating for Dexter Dabs and Movado. Yes, he was known as one of them bad man artists there, but over time, Movado mix up his music. Even back then, Movado give us songs like Hand the Rock and them kind of song there. But I just feel as if a because of the man them vocals or the man them have and a them intentionally sing the song them for the song them sound so. Well, yes, you know, but, but that is their natural vocals, so the song has to sound sweet. Understand what politics watch us say, but don't agree with the fire specifically and Dexter Dabs and Movado. But maybe me I missed the point. Maybe Sir P is stating that it's because of those two gunman song, violent song, become accepted on a broader scale. But if that is the case, do you agree? Let me know in the comment section. The entertainment feed community that I eat for this report had a few things I wanted to share, but me I say never. There is a dancehall artist popcorn at what is said to be his birthday event you just show you off and you don't remember you doing it. So I hear a child say that the kid is crazy, you know. Oh, I wish you would have seen my brother about it. You remember? Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. For a prize money of, what was it they told me? About $20,000 or something like that? Not certain. What? Would you knock off five gallon of camel porridge and two bread, two national bread, in order to win a twenty or 30000 if that is the actual prize money, let me know. I saw you want to see a match. All right, let me show you a match. So I saw you want to see the match. I saw it for sure, man. Show man, the cameraman tired, that's why I'm going to send cross to give them. Them have got five gallon of camel porridge and two national bread per person. No joke, see it there?
Hey, if you want a break, you can talk. Alright. I just have said that in a cause, and I know it look. Big up one love! Big up one love! Big up top tier share. Big up yourself. What you mean if it real? You know, your people just come and see it with them two eyeballs. Hey, someone on the live asking if it real. Can you answer them for me? If No, tell them. If you want to come, you can come and tell them. Come and tell them if it's real. Okay, tell them what's going on. I'm an English woman coming here and I can see these pots. Crazy. <laughs> You see that? I don't know where they're putting it. You see, she don't know where where they're putting it. All right, thank you. Everything real around ya. Not no fake. <laughs> Big up, Jen Jen. Big up, Jen Jen. Nation, that right for now. You see what time I clock? You see what time I knock? We are hurrying to get the f out of here. And as usual, my people. Hey. Hey.